Bokatov Khabrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. We do have breaking news that is coming out of us. Sputnik is reporting on this. This is news that's coming, though, from the United Nations Security Council, the emergency meeting. Uh, Sputnik is calling it behind the scenes. Something very serious transpired between Russia and U.S. over Syria. Now, notice how they word that. Something transpired, excuse me, something very serious transpired between Russia and U.S. over Syria. I want you to notice the seriousness of what the article is saying there. Let's go directly to the article. I think I know what it is. It is so serious. It is the news that we reported on ourselves, as you can see right here. Uh, urgent breaking news. Russia's Russia strikes back. We are at war. Now, remember, we just reported this recently, and that's exactly where we go into the fact that Russia retaliated for the strike that was made by the United States and their coalition on the Syrian army positions that were in the east of Syria uh, and that in the Del Ar El, El Azor region of Syria. Uh, 62 uh, Syrian army uh, officials were killed. Now, if you notice, though, in several different news broadcasts, they speak about in different places. Some call it 90, some call it 80, some call it 62. Uh, the Russian report gives us, and that was on Sputnik Arabic news source, who first broke the story, and it has been suppressed by mainstream media globally. We have already seen nearly 200,000 views on our, on our report about this but it's been suppressed everywhere else. Not the attack by the coalition on Syrian army, but the attack that Russia did on the secret intel base inside of Aleppo. And I think this is exactly what they're referring to right here. Something serious, very serious transpired between Russia and the U.S. over Syria. Now, let me clarify some facts, though. As I started to mention a moment ago, there's a higher report on the number of deaths by some. That is because it was a higher number, but it wasn't the Syrian army. They killed Russian and also killed uh, Iranian troops that were there helping and assisting the Syrian army to keep the air base uh, free from ISIS members. But then Russia strikes back, as we reported on our own broadcast, and the name of that article there is, Urgent Breaking News, Russia Strikes Back, We Are at War. Now that will There will be a link in this broadcast here, so you can go see this news for yourself at 186,000 views on this now. Uh, it is very serious because Russia hit the intel center that actually gave the orders to make the strike. Now, the sad thing is, is that Israel has been involved in this intel center the entire time, which really weakens the relationship between uh, Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu and that of President Putin. It lets Putin know who his enemies really are, unfortunately for the people of Israel. Now, I hate to say that. I do not believe, though, that Russia will attack Israel. Uh, I know that all nations come against Israel. We clearly see that. I happen to believe that all nations coming against Israel is going to be the NATO force. And I believe that you're going to see this take place. We know that in Ezekiel's 38 prophecy there, that Ezekiel speaks about that this army that comes from this headed by Gog, which according to the young man, Nathan, who had had the near-death experience, that comes back and says to the entire world that Obama is Gog totally changing the picture altogether. And all you got to do is take a look at the NATO uh, insignia there, the NATO map, the official map. They lay it out like a flat blueprint there of the earth. And sure enough, due north is the United States from Israel. And so from the utmost uh, regions of the earth, just paraphrasing this, Gog comes down with all of his force. They're barbaric. They don't care for life. But what is the media doing now? The U.S. media and the, and the European media is demonizing Russia and Syria, making it look like they're the ones that are barbaric. They're the ones that are gassing and, 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 and using phosphoric. Uh, weapons, munitions on the Syrian population, burning children alive. And this is what the big deal is in the UN security meeting recently, that Russia is, uh, is using barbarians, uh, are, 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 excuse me, that they are barbaric uh, in, their, in their actual attacks. But we have been uncovering more and more evidence 
will be presenting later this evening that indicts the United States, the Obama administration, not the U.S. people. Believe me, if the U.S. people knew what the Obama administration is doing, they would definitely not let Obama continue. Neither would they allow Hillary Clinton into office. All right. And I'm not saying that Trump is a whole lot better. The one thing I like about Donald Trump is that he's willing to make peace with Russia. That's the one thing I like about the man. I can't say that anything else that he's doing is the best in the world. I don't like the fact that he's aligned himself with a bunch of people that are pro-Vatican because the Vatican is the one starting the war in the very first place. All right, so it's a major issue for me in that regards there. So something very serious transpired. What does the article say here? The current level of violence and the verbal attacks on Russia at the UN is unprecedented. Gilbert uh, Doctoral, uh, European coordinator for the American Committee for uh, East-West Accord, told Radio Sputnik, adding that it seems to indicate that something grave must have happened between the two countries with regard to Syria behind the scenes. Yes, it did! Russia hit the Intel Center that had what? We reported in there. They had, in the Intel Center, they had, uh, uh, as, we, as we brought out about this, let me just see. Okay, I don't actually say, I didn't uh, see, maybe I showed some images on this when I was doing the news broadcast, but I, oh, the I, only thing I actually did bring out is where um, Alfred Martyr and Dr. Uh, Henry uh, Lowendorf are actually speaking on a fact-finding mission that they did with a, uh, for, a, for a delegation. They brought out the United Nations that the U.S. media is feeding the U.S. public a, a massive amount of uh, propaganda. L listen, to, let me just show you. Uh, let me take you here to... Uh, let me show you right here where Dr. Henry Warrendorf uh, says this here. And let's just bring him up on the screen. Let me make sure you got some decent volume to hear this, guys. This is serious. This is extremely serious. Now, I want you to hear what Dr. Win uh, Dr. Henry Lowendorf says about this. That has demonized the Syrian government, demonized its leaders, a, an effort that precedes every other intervention that the United States has made over the course of many, many decades in order to convince people that it's okay for quote-unquote, humanitarian reasons to overthrow a government and to replace it with whatever. The United States prefers uh, a government that is not independent, that is a willing uh, participant in what the U.S., whatever U.S. The journalists is. are shocked. They can't believe so he's saying it. In, Look at in the Damascus guy's face. And what we saw in the two villages we visited outside Damascus belies the propaganda that has um, overwhelmed us. It's hard, it, it, it's hard for even those of us who have been in the peace movement for a long time, it's hard for us to ignore this propaganda. It is so uh, well orchestrated. Work together, coming back in cooperation to try to bring the message and the truth. It's sad, back. guys. It's sad. Even this lady here, there, there's five here on the panel that speak at the United Nations, and every one of them clearly say that, that uh, President Bashar al-Assad has been demonized. And now all these attacks, all these chemical attacks that are happening on the people, the civilian population of Syria, is not being done by Russia or Syria. And we do have an overwhelming amount of evidence that proves, proves that. Now, is it being done by military troops themselves or, or any of our U.S. military? I, I don't think directly. No, I don't believe so. What, what we have found, and we'll present later tonight some of these facts here over the case from all the way from 2013, is that the U.S. has been making sure the right chemical uh, weapons and phosphoric weapons end up in the hands of uh, Syria's enemy, Russia's enemy there, through ISIS, through the militant groups, through the moderate rebels, through every type of mercenary group you can possibly imagine. And this is what this group brings out as well. They said, you don't even know who's who. And they said, there, yes, there are some Syrians also fighting in the conflict. They said, but it's because America is paying them extremely well to go against Bashar al-Assad 
and they have no other choice. They have no jobs. They have no way to feed their families. So they're turning to the other side uh, because the money is there. This is a, it is a crime within itself of the Obama administration. It's not the American public. It's not the American people. Believe me, these are Americans that went there. If the American public knew what the Obama regime is doing, they call Bashar al-Assad a regime. The Obama uh, 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 administration is a regime. All right. That's just the hardcore facts and nobody wants to hear about it. But yes, there is something serious that went on. And that was that the Russian military fired off. Uh, there's two different reports. One says from the submarine, the other says from the ships is actually from the ships from what uh, Sputnik uh, Arabic language reported. They'd fired off cruise missiles, struck the intel positions inside Aleppo, inside Syria. I have to make sure I kind of clarify that for the other candidate that's running for president of the United States. I understand that he doesn't know where Aleppo is. So yes, Aleppo is inside of Syria. It's a stronghold. It is where, you know, <laughs> the Russian Syrian army is trying to free up their people from the U.S. backed rebels, ISIS, militants, groups, everything, even the Turkish military there as well. So it's a very serious thing that's happening right now inside uh, of, uh, of Syria. And when Russia struck this particular compound, according to the Sputnik Arabic language, it's also been brought out by Pravda.ru on their own television media across the entire Russian nation, also around the world uh, on the internet, so we could see this as well. They finally confirmed what we reported. We, we, we reported it right after Sputnik Arabic language did. We kind of got the ball going for the West. It's forcing other people to come and admit it and, and, and face up to the fact of what's going on. All right? So when... When the Pravda, when the television station Pravda actually reported this news of what had happened there, it's also stated, because Sputnik Arabic language stated that U.S. intelligence officers, Israeli Mossad, the Turkish special agents, Saudi special agents, and Qatari special agents were all working in this intel center. That tells what? It tells Russia, one, Turkey is not their friend. It's not, they never were an ally to Russia. They've worked with the United States the entire time. The coup was staged by Erdogan and the United States to get Russia on their side so that Turkey could get troops inside of Syria without Russia bombing them all. It was successful. I, you know, I, I have to say my hats off to the United States, Obama administration. Uh, his little plan worked very smart, very intelligent. I only give it all for intelligence, not because it was a wise thing to do. You're putting the American people at risk. You're putting European people at risk. And I don't think the Obama administration could give a flip less what he's doing to the Polish people right now, putting them at risk with Russia. They're going to use Poland as the battleground. And by the way, the United States is moving nuclear warheads to Russia. And, then, and listen, Speaking of the move of the nuclear warheads to Russia, let me just bring something out too that just really kind of irritates me here. Last night in the debate with, between uh, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, one of the issues came up is Donald Trump goes around and he says, you know, that we got, you know, that, that America has the oldest nuclear arsenal in the world. He says our arsenal is from the 60s. And, and now here we have on RT, NATO is reviewing nuclear playbook to deter terrible attacks by Russia, Pentagon chief. Here in Missouri, they open up their silos where the intercontinental ballistic missiles are housed at. And then Hillary gets angry and it makes, it makes, uh, it, it seems to make the way she does it, it seems to make the whole world angry at Donald Trump for revealing how weak the nation of America is. Okay, blame it on Donald Trump. Why don't you blame it on Wikipedia then? Wikipedia, the Minuteman 3, which by the way is the one that they opened up the silo for here in Missouri to show that it's ready and ready to go. But what does Wikipedia have to say about the Minuteman 3? It says right here, all right, the, uh, the development of the Minuteman began in the mid-1950s as the uh, outgrowth of basic research in the solid fuel rocket motors, which indicated the ICBM based on solids was possible. Such a missile could stand ready for extended periods of time and little maintenance and then launch on command. In comparison, existing U.S. missile designs using liquid fuels require a lengthy fueling process uh, immediately before launch. It goes on to say, though, basically, uh, if you look at the article all the way up to 1965, 
the Minuteman II is when it entered service then, and uh, the Minuteman III by, followed in 1970. So all of the evidence about our nuclear capabilities is on Wikipedia. Don't blame it on Donald Trump. Blame it on Wikipedia then for telling the world how old the nuclear arsenal is of the United States. And that's another thing that brings to my attention as well, DEFCON. Now, by the way, when my wife did the report the other day, people came out and said, this is not the official government site. All right, we did the research. We see that DEF CON is not the original site. That is the one that you can pull up, uh, everybody goes to to see what the, the current status is of DEF CON. But if you even type in defcon.gov, it always brings you to that site first. So people assume that that is the actual official site. It is a legitimate news, alternative news source though. Nonetheless, and they monitor the government official website to keep up to date with what the DEF CON alert status is. But even DEF CON, they have the nuclear warning level all the way down to five. And of course, they're getting their DEF CON level from the US government's website, whatever the, the dot, whatever that one happens to be. But the point is, is that we're at a green level as if there's no big problem. Do you guys not remember me bringing out the other day, Russia in a, in a military drill pulls out in the central part of Russia, all of their portable nuclear weapon, or not all of them, but 60 of them, intercontinental ballistic missiles, the Topol, some of the most deadly arsenals there is on earth. And believe me, the Topol is nowhere near as old as what we have in the United States. Not to mention that Russia has supersonic nuclear capabilities. This is what the Obama administration dreads, but Obama doesn't seem to care. He doesn't care if he puts you at risk and neither does Hillary Clinton care if she puts you at risk. She is determined to drive the world into war. And there's many nations in Europe right now, part of the European Union that are looking to bail out of the EU because they see the reckless leadership by the United States. Yana is going to be bringing out a special broadcast this evening, by the way, on Hungary. You're going to be shocked to find out what's going on in there. And now the heavy influence of the Vatican trying to topple the government itself. Guys, it is majorly serious. We are, it should be, a, we should be at a DEF CON yellow right next to a red alert right now. That's how serious between the two nations that are going on. And yes, Syria will be the beginning of it. And according to Nathan, the young man, and I'll put the link in there where I did the broadcast on that. It's been close to a half a million views already. And the spot where Nathan speaks about that, uh, a nuclear confrontation will, will be, will it be engaged between the United States and Russia. It starts in Syria is where he saw it at. And many of you listen, if you want to go listen to the whole broadcast or subtitles about it, you may misunderstand what this young man is saying. Many of the Messianic uh, believers that are Jewish believers have misunderstand this young man altogether. But I have looked very carefully at what he says. And I believe that his NDE, near-death experience, was accurate. And I believe that when he speaks about the two the two dead men that raise up there on the Mount of Olives, I believe it's the two witnesses that rise up just before the, the, the showing of the Messiah, we are, we're at the door. We are at the door of some very serious things. But remember, in Matthew 24, Jesus said it's only the beginning of sorrows. Only the beginning, guys. It's going to get worse. Anyway, uh, U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Samantha Power, who has never been known for her diplomatic talent, as Dr. O put it, accused Russia of barbarism in Syria. She added that Moscow and Damascus uh, ostensibly make war instead of pursuing peace. She also blamed both governments for bombing the humanitarian convoys, hospitals, and first responders who are trying to desperately to keep people alive. Now, I'm going to turn the table on Miss Samantha Power, okay, because she is lying right out of her own teeth. And when it comes to who broke the ceasefire, I was there overlooking Damascus the day the ceasefire was broken. All right, I have it on camera when the ceasefire was broken. Not only that, when there was a ceasefire between the United States and Russia, Russia wanting to make the agreement public. Why not, Miss Samantha Power, do you not want to make it public? Why doesn't Obama want to make it public? Because you're afraid to know that what was leaked to the public, that there would be no aerial campaigns. And what did the United States do during the ceasefire agreement? Bomb the Syrian army. Hmm. For over an hour, you bombed them while Russia 
constantly contacted your, and remember, you supposedly had a direct line to each other, and he was saying, you're bombing the wrong target, you're bombing the Syrian army, you're bombing the Russians and the Iranians. You think the Americans cared? No. Believe me, when they let you know when the first bomb started dropping that you were bombing the wrong ones, but yet you went on for over an hour over a huge area, you weren't attacking ISIS. You were making sure ISIS could get in. And that's why you don't want to make it known to the Western public that Russia bombed the intel center there. And, and, I, and my heart goes out to the families that lost their loved ones in that attack. I'm an American and I love my people. I'm Jewish, so I love my Israeli brothers as well. And I care about human beings, period. So yes, I cared about the Turkish and the Saudis and the Qatarians that were there as well. But I also know that they have no business there. But these people are there because they have to do what the government commands them to do. I understand that as well. But believe me, if the U.S. would have stayed out of this, if, they would have, if Obama would have not got his nose in there when Russia first came there at the invitation of the Syrian government, and now you're trying to do a no-fly zone, do you not realize, even as Ash Carter said before a congressional meeting in the United States, this will bring about a war with Russia to do a no-fly zone over Syria? Of course it would. Can you not expect anything else? Bashar al-Assad is the president. He has representatives at the United Nations, and you're telling him that he's going to have a no-fly zone? Is that what you did in Libya as well? Isn't that what uh, Miss Clinton had to do there? So why? So you could go in there and just slaughter the people. And you could back up the groups that you want to back up. And that's still your intention. What did Bashar al-Assad do? Oh, you want to say he did the chemical attack in 2013? No, he didn't. Aaron Erdem has condemned the United States government, a Kurdish ally of the U.S., was honest enough to speak the truth at his own peril. Now he's in prison. Why? The U.S. made sure Turkey arrested him. The U.S. will do anything it can to stop the truth from getting out. And you know something? Let me tell you something. For me, I'm not, I'm not a... a Putin lover. I'm not a, a, a Syrian lover. I, I, you know, I am a lover of humanity. I care about every human being. Was that not the very mission? When Jesus himself, Yeshua, when he came to this earth, did he not care about human beings? He was coming to try to reach souls. And that's what matters to me. And if you don't, then why did you send missionaries to Russia in the first place? if you don't care about the people. And then I hear now, I've seen Russia clamp down on the religious activities that are going on in this country. You know, he's not against the true Christians. But the reason he clamped down is because Putin knows from history that Stalin, Joseph Stalin, and, Vlad, and, and um, uh, Joseph Stalin, when they came in there, and they toppled the czars of Russia. It was done in order to bring about, to crush Eastern beliefs. Vladimir Lenin and Joseph Stalin were Jesuits trained by Rome. And Putin is worried that they're going to try to do it again. It's not that he's against freedom of religion but he's concerned about what the West is trying to do again. And if you don't believe it, wait till Yanni gives a report tonight. You'll find out what they're doing here in Europe right now. It's a shock. We know from proof she grew up in this society. You need to know the truth before they crush you. And then believe me, this is what they're going to do in the U.S. Why do you think Hillary Clinton, she's going to bring in 60,000 Six times more the refugees than what Obama did, and you've already got a chaos in, in America right now just before the elections, you're going to end up just like Germany. Sweden, better yet. Sweden has 55 no-go zones right now for even the police because they didn't use any common sense. Help a refugee. Help the refugee that's a family that is not a threat to your society. I'm not against that at all. But when you just bus in and ship in men and you give an open invitation to, to, to all the people that are in Syria and saying, there's money and jobs for you here and women. What do you think they're going to do? They're going to come. That's from personal, direct source on the ground. Right out of Holland. A very good brother. Talking to the Syrian refugees that said, 
We came because we were invited to come and told there were money and jobs, free money and jobs, and even women. That's why so many men came. Maybe everybody should send a thank you card to President Barack Obama. And you do need a change in the country. You need a change, though, that will not continue to drive our American brothers and sisters to a worse condition than it already is. And now they're wanting to take away all your religious liberties. It's coming. Yeah, vote Hillary. If you vote Hillary, say goodbye to alternative media. Say goodbye. All you'll ever get is CNN. Because some people say, oh, you listen to the propaganda of the Russian media. We don't just listen to propaganda. We also talk directly to the sources. And I realize, yes, there is propaganda in Russian media as well. But one thing I will tell you, watch Putin's words, watch Obama's words, and see who's more consistent in what they're saying. See who says they're against the New World Order. See who says they're for the New World Order. See who closed all the Rothschild banks in their countries. And see who has them open and happy and drives all the other nations into a dismal debt that cannot be paid back. Yeah. And yes, I am against the Rothschilds. I don't think they're real Jews either. True Jewish people are in their homeland waiting for the return of the Messiah. And I know there's a great movement amongst the black people that believe that they're the Jews and the Jews there are not the Jews. My brother, sister, let me tell you something. I'm not saying that you're not real Jews. If you're real Jews and you already believe that the Messiah is Yeshua, then you have no need to go to, to, go to, to go to Israel at all. But if you are Jewish, I don't care what color you are, wait till Yana does it. She's got a message on that as well. I don't care what color you are, you should be in the homeland right now because that's where Mashiach is coming. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Erev Tov.